Amen. And, and I know that uh, most of you weren't here last Sunday afternoon when, when my daughter preached uh, a sermon Amen. to the ministers in training. Uh, September, Santa of September. Um, she preached a good sermon. Yes, too, yeah. All right now, so <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she preached a good sermon. Homiletically sound. Amen. Okay. When you have found Genesis chapter 12, would you rise and rise to the word of God? Beginning at verse 10. You have to say amen. 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 Now, there was a famine in the land. And Abram went down to Egypt to live there for a while. Because the famine was severe. As he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife, Sarai, I know what a beautiful woman you are. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Then they will kill me, but will let you live. Say you are my sister, so that I will be treated well for your sake, and my life will be spared because of you. When Abram came to Egypt, the Egyptians saw that she was a very beautiful woman, and when Pharaoh's officials saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh, and she was taken into the palace. He treated Abram well for her sake, and Abram acquired sheep and cattle, male and female donkey, men servants, maid servants, and camels. But the Lord inflicted serious diseases on Pharaoh and his household because of Abram's Sarai's wife, Abram's wife Sarai. So Pharaoh summoned Abram. What have you done to me? He said. Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister? So that I took her to be my wife. Now then, here's your wife. Take her and go. Then Pharaoh gave orders about Abram and his men. And they sent him on his way with his wife and everything he had. Amen. I, I want to talk about what a mess. <laughs> what a mess. You know, sometimes it seems inevitable that when God speaks to us, and we begin to do miraculous things, walking by faith. That the devil comes along, and on the heels of doing something great, we end up doing something real stupid. Here we have in Genesis chapter 12, the story of a man named Abraham. God renamed him Abraham. Uh, his wife, Sarai, God renamed her Sarah. And God comes to him. And, and, and he does something that's very similar to what's going on in my life and in your life. He says in verse 1, Leave your country and your people and your father's household and go to a land I will show you. He didn't tell Abram where he was going. He just said, step out and follow me. That's why Abram or Abraham became known as the father of the faithful, the father of faith, because he trusted God. He believed God, uh, that God would take him to a place where he would be blessed. How many of us in our lives can trust God to a point where God tells us blindly, just follow me? 
And if you follow me, there's blessings behind it. Look at what he said, verse 2. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. You will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the people of the earth will be blessed through you. What a, what a word from God. Amen. That if you just follow me, everywhere you go, you'll be blessed. If someone blesses you, I'll bless them. If someone tries to curse you, I'll curse them. Anybody that tries to get in your way, I'm going to jack them up. <laughs> so Abram or Abraham followed God by faith. So many of us have done some miraculous things through the power of the blood of Jesus. And God has taken us to higher levels and deeper depth. God has taken us to, to, to do and to experience things we never thought we would experience. Look at us. Some of us thought we'd be dead at this point in our lives. But God's grace has been on our lives. But we really can't account for the dumb things we do in life. As blessed as we are, as much as we love Jesus, we just can't account for those dumb things we do in life. And I know I'm, I'm you know, I know I'm only talking to you know one or two people in here besides me and sister. I understand that. I understand that I'm talking to a congregation of people who have made very few mistakes. And if we look at our resume over the last several years, we have a starting resume of things that we've done well. But for those one or two people that are here today, we need to understand what's going on. Amen. We need to understand why we keep making messes that come behind blessings. So we have the story of Abraham, who sees that there's a famine in the land. Now, understand... It's interesting because God said, if you follow me, if you go where I tell you, you will be blessed. So the first thing that happens is there's a famine in the land. You know, sometimes God allows things to take place to kind of spur you along the way. Amen, somebody. Amen. Yeah, God has instructed us to do things. God has told us to do things. God has shown us the pathway but sometimes, because we don't like doing things that are uncomfortable, we tend to lag a little behind. So God caused the famine in the land to kind of move Abram <coughs> along the way. Some of us got into bad relationships at some point in our lives. And we would have been content to stay there suffering. But God turned up the heat. Amen, somebody. He either lost his job, didn't want to work, went upside your head, did something, amen, that made you look at the situation and say, I've decided I'm going to follow God. So, so, so here's Abram. He, he goes to Egypt. And, and Sarah, Sarah had to be some kind of fine, y'all. <laughs> listen to me. Sarah had to be some kind of fine for him to look at her and say, listen, we're going into this new country. And they're going to look at you. And because you're so fine, they're going to want to kill me just to get you. So look what Abram says. Tell them you're my sister. So they tell this lie. And, and, and as a result of that, God reveals something to the Egyptians. And they began to have a lot of strange things going on in their household because of the lie Abram told. 
Now, this was a mess, to say the least. Tell them you're my sister. So, they take his wife, and Pharaoh looks at her and says, I'm going to take you as my wife. Brother, how could you lay down at night? How could you sleep at night knowing your wife is in somebody else's house because of a lie you told? <clears throat> now let's give Abraham, let, let, let's look at, look at the situation for a minute. Why did he do that? Because he was scared. He looked at a difficult situation and instead of trusting God, he told a lie. Let me tell you the first thing I want you to take home with you tonight. If you're facing a difficult situation, if you're facing difficult choices, if you're facing things in your life that look insurmountable, I want you to get this. This is a very simple lesson. God does not need your help. <laughs> he has spent all of eternity being God all by himself. He, he weighed the mountains in, in, in scale and weighed the hills in balance. He set the borders of the seas to go only so far and come back. He allows the sun to come up every morning and the moon to come up every night. He puts every star in place all by himself. God doesn't need our help to solve a difficult situation for us. All we need to do is what Proverbs chapter 3, verse 4 and 5 say. Turn to Proverbs chapter 3 for a moment. If you have to say amen. 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 And, and, you know, I said 3, 4, and 5, but we, we, can't, we can never start there. We have to start at verse 1. Why doesn't God need your help? My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart. For they will prolong your life many years and bring you what? Okay, so instead of lying, the first thing we learn is, is what is it that you and I need to do? It says it right there. Do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands... Keep the word where? In your heart. For they will prolong your life and bring you prosperity. Even in Egypt. No matter how fine your wife is, no matter how fine your husband is, no matter how bad the situation looks like, if you follow the word of God and keep it in your life, they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. Now, I suggest if Abram had been meditating on that, he might have had a different conclusion to come to. Verse 3, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and what is he going to do? Direct, direct your path. Now, if he directs your path, even if he directs you to Egypt with a fine wife, he knows what he's doing. All right, all right. Amen. He leads you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. God is not going to lead you somewhere that's going to end up in a mess. Amen. Amen. God is not a God of messing. God is a God of blessing. Hallelujah. Amen, somebody? Amen. And if God leads you into something that looks like a mess, it's really not a mess. It's a Romans 8, 28 scenario. All right. We know that, for we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are the call according to his purpose. So it might look like a mess in the flesh. Yeah. Well. Amen, somebody? Amen. But to God, it's an opportunity to show himself strong on your behalf. God does not need your help. 
Right? There's no scenario, there's no situation you need to lie your way out of. Amen? Amen. That means your taxes. Well, all right. Amen, somebody. Amen. It, that, that means if you're late for work. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. See, we're so quick in small things to feel like, you know, well, maybe God, well, God didn't make me late and, and my boss don't know God. So listen, God is in charge. <laughs> God might not know your boss, but God knows you. And in fact, God does know your boss. He made your boss. He made your boss's boss. He made your boss's job. So God is in charge of everything. Trust him. Amen? Amen. So the first thing is, God doesn't need your help. Say that. God doesn't need my help. Okay? If you want to be blessed financially, all right, God doesn't need your help. <laughs> okay? A lot of people think that, well, you know, maybe God is moving on me to go down to uh, the, the lottery line to get God that needs your help. Amen, somebody. Uh, maybe God is speaking to me to play a number. God, God doesn't need your help. Amen? Amen? Whatever God leads you to do is going to be legitimate and right. So, 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 so Abram really tried to help God. So the first thing, God doesn't need your help. The second thing that I see here is even more troubling because Abram didn't go into this all by himself. He asked Sarah, say you're my sister. I want you to participate in this life. So, excuse me. So Sarah agreed with Abraham, and as a result of that, she became so attractive that Pharaoh himself said, I'm going to make you my wife. What would make Sarah do that? I want you to say you're my sister. And, 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 and the likely scenario is somebody's going to see you, take you into their home, maybe want to be their wife, and I get treated well for that. Now, now Abraham got some serious issues going on there for lack of trust. But, but, but what would make Sarah do that? See, my point that I want to make here is never say what you won't do. But we're always so quick to talk about, oh, no, I would never do that. I, I look at them, uh, they have the press. I would never do that. Listen, a Sarah was willing, watch this now, to be taken by another man. Because she loved Abram so much, she wanted to see him treated well. The, listen, never say what love won't make you do. Well, come on, Amen, somebody. See, see we always talk about, ah, oh, no, honey, I, yeah, I wouldn't stay there with, with all that going. You don't know what you would do for love. Yeah. We're so quick to judge somebody else's situation, but I'm always careful to say, I need to look out about saying what I won't do because under the right circumstances, you will do almost anything to survive. But what we need to do is to trust God in every situation, under every circumstance, and know that he will bring us through. Sarah looked at this situation and said, listen, whatever it takes, I, I love you that much that I'm willing to participate in this life. Now, now, one of the things you and I need to understand is that our lives always affect other people. Amen, somebody. Amen. Well, I'll just tell this lie and everything will be all right. Your lives always affect other people. So, so Abram and Sarah lied, and at Pharaoh's house, 
got cursed because of it. But look at what God did. God revealed something to Pharaoh. All right? God revealed something to Pharaoh. And, you know, I love it because a lot of times things get revealed about us. And it's God's way of getting us back on track. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Sometimes God turns up the heat by allowing things to happen in our lives to get us back on track. So, so, so Pharaoh had some mess going on, and God, God just busted him. That's this man's wife. So Abram finally says, okay, I was wrong. I'm going to move on with my life. How do you walk away from a mess like that? How do you walk away from a mess where you impacted someone else's life? You impacted someone else's home. You impacted someone else. How do you walk away from a mess like that? Say thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. How many messes have we do we have behind us? That, that if we went through life with the memory of all those messes that we've made, with the, the drama of all those messes that we've made, with the problems of all those messes that we've made, imagine what kind of psychological monster we would be with stuff going on in our head. We'd never be able to praise God like we know we need to be able to praise God. But thank God for Jesus. Yeah. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Thank God that the blood of Jesus forgives us for of all of our sins. And as we go forward to God, God can take our messes and turn them into miracles. Amen. Hallelujah. God, God can take the thing that we've made into messes, the thing that we've turned upside down, the thing that we've made look like it should have never happened, but somehow, some way, we didn't trust God, and we ended up in a mess. But somehow, God took that mess and turned it into a platform for us to preach the gospel. Turned it into a platform for us to be able to praise his name. Turned it into a platform to talk about how we were down, but God lifted us up. To talk about how we were red, scarlet, but he turned up whiter than snow. Thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah, because if we went by what we used to be, hallelujah, we would never be able to praise God for what we are now. If we talk about our messes, we couldn't talk about our blessings. If we talked about what we did wrong, we could never look at what God is doing right. If we talked about all the things that we did, all the lies we told, all the messes we had, all the people we impacted, we would never be able to stand up and say, thank God that Jesus set me free. Thank God that Jesus set me on the right track. Thank God that Jesus healed me. Jesus delivered me. Jesus turned my midnight into midday. Hallelujah. Jesus went to the cross. He suffered, he bled, and he died to give us an opportunity to move on from our past and to make our stumbling blocks our stepping stones. Thank God for Jesus. How many of you can say thank God for Jesus? Today? Thank God for what he's done in our lives. Thank God for what he continues to do in our lives. Every time he messed up, and here's the miracle about it. Here's the blessing about it. He doesn't do every other mess. <laughs> Amen. He cleans up. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. He cleans up every mess we made, sets us on the right track, and helps us to move on to a place where we glory in him and glorify him. My God, my God, my God. If we look at who we used to be, and think about who we are now. We wonder why we would even, God would even allow us to sit here. But thank God for the blood of Jesus. Amen. Put your hands together and thank God for the blood of Jesus. God is such a good God. Hallelujah. He is such a good God. We love you, Lord. Amen. Listen, if you're here today, and you've never received Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life, I extend the invitation for you to come today. If you've never, if you've never asked him or allowed him into your life, I extend the invitation.
If you come forward, I'll lead you in a prayer right here, right now, where Jesus will be the Lord and Savior of your life. If you're already saved, and you're looking for a church home, this is a mighty good place to be. Is there one here today? Come to Jesus. Would you come? Is there one here today? Would you come?